the increase in quality of life that AI can deliver is extraordinary. We can make the world amazing and we can make people's lives amazing. We can cure diseases. We can increase material wealth. We can like help people be happier, more fulfilled, all of these sorts of things. And then people are like, oh, well, no one is going to work. But people want status. People want drama. People want new things. People want to create. People want to like feel useful. Um, people want to do all these things. And we're just going to find new and different ways to do them, even in a vastly better, like unimaginably good standard of living world. But that world, the positive trajectories with AI, that world is with an AI that's aligned with humans and doesn't hurt, doesn't limit, doesn't... Um doesn't try to get rid of humans. And there's some folks who consider all the different problems with a super intelligent AI system. So uh, one of them is Eliezer Yudkowsky. He warns that AI will likely kill all humans. And there's a bunch of different cases, but I think one way to summarize it is that it's almost impossible to keep AI aligned as it becomes super intelligent. Can you steel man the case for that? And um, to what degree do you disagree with that trajectory? So first of all, I will say, I think that there's some chance of that. And it's really important to acknowledge it because if we don't talk about it, if we don't treat it as potentially real, we won't put enough effort into solving it. And I think we do have to discover new techniques to be able to solve it. Um, I think a lot of the predictions, this is true for any new field, but a lot of the predictions about AI in terms of capabilities, um, in terms of what the safety challenges and the easy parts are going to be, have turned out to be wrong. The only way I know how to solve a problem like this is iterating our way through it, learning early, and limiting the number of one shot to get it right scenarios that we have to steel man well there's I, I can't just pick like one ai safety case or ai alignment case but i think eliezer wrote a really great blog post i think some of his work has been sort of somewhat difficult to follow or had what i view as like quite significant logical flaws but he wrote this one blog post outlining why he believed that alignment was such a hard problem that i thought was again, don't agree with a lot of it, but well-reasoned and thoughtful and, and very worth reading. So I think I'd point people to that as the steel man. Yeah, and I'll also have a conversation with him. Um, there is some aspect, and, and I'm torn here because it's difficult to reason about the exponential improvement of technology. Um, but also I've seen time and time again how transparent and iterative trying out uh, as you improve the technology, trying it out, releasing it, testing it, how that can uh, improve your understanding of the technology uh, in such that the philosophy of how to do, for example, safety of any kind of technology, but AI safety um, gets adjusted over time rapidly. A lot of the formative AI safety work was done before people even believed in deep learning and, and certainly before people believed in large language models. And I don't think it's like updated enough given everything we've learned now and everything we will learn going forward. So I think it's got to be this very tight feedback loop. I think the theory does play a real role, of course, but continuing to learn what we learn from how the technology trajectory goes is quite important. I think now is a very good time, and we're trying to figure out how to do this, to significantly ramp up technical alignment work. I think we have new tools. We have new understanding. Uh, and there's a lot of work that's important to do that we can do now.